can now. All right, I think we are recording. Okay, um, so welcome back to first week of discussion. Today, I think what we want to cover is, I want to answer a few questions that I've been receiving um, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and I want to, uh, I want to go over the homework, and then I want to answer specific questions or problems that uh, you all might have had while watching the videos this week and while working on uh, the homework. Before I start on my end, I want to ask you all for feedback about the videos you may have watched or about the homework you may have worked on. Are there any concepts or questions that you want me to cover today? Or is there anything specific, uh, particularly from the videos that you want to cover? Because I want to talk about that first and then we'll come over to the homeworks. Okay. I don't hear anything so far. Uh, in which case, why don't I go ahead and tackle the questions that I've received through, throughout the course of the week. I want to answer some of those questions and we'll keep it quick. And then we can jump really quickly into this week's content, the videos, and of course, the homework itself. Um, some questions that I've received so far. Oh, and by the way, those of you that responded to me on Twitter and helped answer que and answered questions or shared your success stories, thank you for doing that. Please continue to do that. If you've not explored that option, please look into uh, look into starting a Twitter account um, and and sharing some of these uh, experiences with everybody else. Um, so some people have asked me that they want to pursue graduate education or a PhD in HEOR that they were training in claims data analysis. For those people, I will just say, please apply to the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy, Department of Pharmacy Administration. We are always willing to accept your applications. Uh, an application deadline is January 15th, if I remember correctly, of every year. Uh, so you have some time to apply between now and then. Uh, I have gotten a bunch of emails or questions asking me that people want resources to hold on to for future references. I want to clarify that everything you see on SAS Studio, you can download onto your own personal computer and you can actually save onto your own personal computer. I encourage you to go ahead and do that. So if you want to hold on to these resources after the bootcamp is over, you should still be able to do that. Um, for those of you that have access to the box folder, for those of you from the University of Mississippi and those that have a link to the box folder, you're welcome to download those files as well. I have made a conscious effort that every time I write a code file, I leave enough comments in there that you can actually just read the code file and understand what uh, each line of program is doing without having to go back and watch the videos over again. Uh, but if nothing else, you can at least go back to the videos, which they will be up on YouTube always. So they will be a resource to you long after this bootcamp is over. Um, some people have asked me how to use SAS to do machine learning, meta-analysis, Statistical analysis and interpretation. Uh, I'm sorry, this is that stuff is just outside the scope of this class, and we are not going to cover any of that stuff. Uh, in fact, if you want to do some stuff like uh, machine learning, uh, you're probably better off using R, if anything, right? Uh, for statistical analysis, interpretation, meta analysis, a lot of that can be done in SAS really well, too, I will say, but it, that's just not the scope of this bootcamp. Um, I, I love one comment I received that said, uh, please don't choose the easiest data set, uh, make it challenging for us because we need to understand the complexity. I love the enthusiasm um, and I'm excited to see that you are all up for a challenge, but I will say that um, the, the complexity is coming. If, if you have worked on week one's homework, if you've seen week one's videos and you thought it was too simple for you, just, just hold on, hold on. This will be as complex as it needs to be. Uh, and for those that are looking for even more complexity, there is a class project uh, which uh, I will make available to you guys through a YouTube video that I have not recorded yet, but I will, I will make that happen. And that class project is uh, it's pretty challenging. And we'll talk about that in the coming weeks as well. But of the three years that I've worked on this class, that I've taught this class, um, I have received consistent feedback that the class project is pretty challenging and I intended for it to be that way. So we can talk more about what challenges you will face uh, in the weeks going forward. Um, all right, one final question that I do think is important to address. I've had some people ask me if they really need prior experience with SAS in order to uh, benefit from this bootcamp, uh, or if they need any prerequisite knowledge, and the answer is no. 
this class is aimed for a beginner. If you've never looked at SaaS before, if you've never experimented with SaaS, if you've never tried anything with SaaS, you should still be able to watch these videos and be successful. So I don't think you need any prior knowledge. As far as the time commitment that goes into this class, I would say that think of this class as a three credit hour course, right? As long as you're putting in three to four hours of work um, every week outside the classroom, I think you should be successful. Now, as we go forward, we are going to start moving a little faster, uh, which means that you might have to dedicate a little bit more time. Uh, but really, because this is a boot camp, you can take this at your own speed and you can choose to go at whatever speed you want, um, which I think is the format that I really like about having these YouTube videos. Um, all right. Having said that, uh, I want to, those are the questions I had about uh, the course in general. Uh, a few things I wanted to discuss before we go forward were um, some feedback I received about SAS Studio. Has everyone on the call right now been able to access SAS Studio and all the files on SAS Studio? Has anyone had problems? So Sujit, I actually had some issues importing the data file. Okay. Um, it wouldn't show up under any of the folders or subfolders. Um, I could have been doing something, something silly or overlooking. Um, no, sure. That's, that's a complaint I've heard before. So that's probably not just you. Uh, were you able to have, uh, see the CSV file on SAS studio at all? No. Okay. I could okay. see it if you've uploaded, but except just that one file. I see. Queenie, what were you saying? I did not catch that. Yeah, actually, same with me. I thought that maybe like there is something I'm doing wrong. So I tried to go into the box folder, downloaded it, and even tried to make a, make a library, but it did not happen. I mean, I don't know what am I, what am I doing wrong, but... I see. I understand. So, so I think... Uh, did somebody have something to add? No, no, I was... Uh, oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I had the same issue, too, with trying to do the... It was the same. I saw uh, Dr. Pittman had tweeted it at you about it with the drag and drop. I couldn't get that import to work. And then when I tried it with the code, I couldn't get it to work either. See, this is why Twitter works. <laughs> this is why Twitter is helpful. But, uh, but Matthew, I, I understand. I think this is a problem I've seen a few people express. Um, and I'll go over some solutions for this and I'll talk about why this should not affect your uh, long term SaaS learning experience. Samuel, did you have something you wanted to add? You know, I was just saying that I was facing the same issue, but uh, I discussed it with Dr. Pittman and it was fine. I could, I was able to um, work on the homework. See, I wish you had shared that on Twitter so we could all have learned what you I, did. The <laughs> thing is, I just did it um, like right now in the morning. I'm so it's sorry. Fine. About that. It's fine. It's fine. I'm picking on you. Don't, I'm picking on you. You did not do anything wrong. I'm glad you were able to figure it out. Um, what I will do though is, so as we go through the homework right now, I will show you how I would import it, but I understand that I have access to some folders that you don't have uh, access to. So I'm going to use, show you guys how I would do it. And then um, I will also try and work through how I would import this file if it was just on a folder on my computer and then I had to get into SAS Studio. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, as far as SAS Studio, I have heard one person tell me that uh, if you're signing up for SAS Studio, please make sure you select United States as your region on that first screen where you register for an account. If you don't select the US as your region, apparently you don't see any of the files. Um, apparently you don't see any of the files that I have uploaded and made available to all of you guys. So please be sure to remember that. I will update my instructions for joining SAS Studio on that note because I did not know about this before. Um, the next thing that I've seen some feedback about are SAS libraries. For those of you on the call, um, before we jump into the import routine with the homework, feedback about libraries. Were you all able to understand temporary and permanent libraries and the differences between those two? Okay, I got one thumbs up. Yeah, same here. Okay, did anybody have trouble yeah, I understanding? I think I did, but I did have a question about creating, like I had some trouble creating a library, but I think it was first where I was trying to put it. Um, 
because it was in the share or it was linked to the, I guess the file you had shared. And so we couldn't do anything there. So I, I figured that out. Um, but can we create a file in like the, the library's folder for where, you, you know, where it shows outputs where the temporary one is, can we create one that says like class and have our outputs down there? Can you say that again? I'm not sure I understood that question. The last part oh. of that. So in SAS Studio, you know, down at the bottom, there's the libraries where we have the work folder that shows our, when we do outputs and it's a temporary file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can I create a folder inside that libraries, to say class to put my outputs in because I, I couldn't figure out how to do that. Maybe that's. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can do that. And that's part of the homework. So hopefully when we go over that, you'll be able to see that as well. Okay. Cause I put that folder somewhere else. <laughs> I see. I see. This, when you say somewhere else, where did you put it? Well, it's up here. It's actually, um, under my courses is where I've got my outputs filed and stuff. My, when I did my, my library, I put it under my courses. And so it's up there. If that's, I see. Okay. Why don't, why don't I go over how I would do this and where I would create my permanent library. Um, and then we can talk about if that's actually accessible to you guys and how you've done it as well. Cause that's unfair. Um, yes. Okay. And the one last thing I do want to add is uh, I've heard some complaints about Macs versus Windows and how you may have problems with the formatting when you use a Mac versus a window. Uh, I, I, I don't have a solution to the Mac versus Windows problem because I really don't like Macs. And the reason I don't like Macs is because SAS is not available on Macs. Right? So I've never used a Mac before. Uh, that's not true. I've used Mac briefly and it's a, it's a good system, but I have stayed away from it because SAS does not support Macs. And I do a lot of work with my with SAS on my computer, uh, so so I would recommend if you're all going if you're going to uh, want to install SAS on your computers and if you're planning to be working in SAS a good bit, then just try and buy Windows software. I promise you, Microsoft is not paying me to say this, but I think life just becomes easier when you have Windows if you want to be working in SAS. Now, if SAS is not a criterion, then then you can decide what you want to do. Uh, but if you are having format issues with the files or with the, even with the CSV files, I hear sometimes Mac is doing something that's making the import routine weird. Uh, I, I really do not know how to solve that problem. If you, if you bring it up to me, I can try and solve it. If not, we can throw it out to the Twitter world, see if there are other Mac SAS users that can, that can help us out. And that is the best I can do right now. All right, let me right now start sharing my screen. Um, all right, can you all see my screen on SAS Studio? Okay, I got a thumbs up. I can see it, but it's very it's blurry. Very blurry. There it goes, it's coming in. Okay. That may just be my internet being slow. So let's hope that improves soon. Okay. Um, all right. So what I want to do first is talk about libraries for a brief second, and then I want to switch over and I want to talk about the homework itself for this week. Uh, the first thing I want to say about libraries is that SAS libraries may not be straightforward. And I, and I get it. SAS libraries are not the easiest thing in the world to understand. Um, Whenever SAS uses libraries, the goal of using those libraries is to be is to help SAS look in the right folder location on your own personal computer in order to make sure that um, you can refer to any files in that folder without having to specify the path every single time. Right now, those libraries which actually refer to physical folders on your computer on your personal computer, those are permanent libraries. Any files you put within those folders don't get deleted when you close SAS. But there are some temporary libraries. There are there is one temporary library within SAS, and that's the default place for SAS to so, store all of your data sets. The reason SAS has done it this way is because if you're working on a project that has, let's say, 10,000 lines of code, and you've been working on this for six months, you probably do not want to save every single data set you create in a permanent library because you will 
run out of computer memory really, really quickly if you do that. Instead, if you save everything you need to the permanent library, but all the other data sets are just in temporary library, you can recreate them at the click of a button by running a few lines of code, right? So only the most important files, only the most important files, the large ones, and the ones that are critical to your project will be saved to a permanent library. And the rest of the files can just be saved to a temporary library. And as you're working on a project, you need to make the decision as to which files should be saved in a permanent library and which one should be saved in a temporary library. In the last week of this bootcamp, I have a topic specifically for programming etiquette, uh, where we will talk about good practices while programming in SAS, how to decide which files deserve to be saved in the permanent library, which ones don't need to be saved in the permanent library, so on and so forth. But for now, just try to understand what the differences are and what the uh, what the uh, consequences are of your decisions to save a file in temporary or permanent libraries. And then we can make some, uh, we can learn a little more about when to save something in temporary libraries versus permanent libraries, right? Uh, now within SAS Studio, if I'm showing you my libraries on the left side here, this work library is the only library that is temporary. Everything else is permanent. In fact, of all the permanent libraries in SAS, Every single one actually comes pre-installed. Those are these are SAS default libraries, and SAS tries to help you out with these libraries with several little tricks. For example, the maps libraries has a lot of geolocation data. If you ever want to do geo mapping in SAS, where you build a map of the United States or the world, and then you want to color in certain numbers, certain parts of the map, depending on whatever variable you are trying to look at, you can do all that stuff using these inbuilt libraries within SAS. Uh, that, that stuff actually goes beyond the scope of this bootcamp, so we are not going to go there, but all of these libraries are permanent. The class library is the only permanent library that is custom created, right? This library was created by me, and hopefully you should have access to this library as well, because this is the library where all of this bootcamp's files are being stored. Now, if I want, the thing about the class library is that the class library is read only. You cannot save any files to the class library because I actually created this library as part of this course. And when you enrolled and signed up for SAS Studio, you get access to it, but it is a read only library for you guys. So if you try to save a file to the class library, it will throw you an error. If you try to upload a CSV file to the class library, it will throw you an error. Now, this class library should appear in here for you guys. So for me, the class library is appearing under my content, but for you all, I bet that it appears under my courses. Is that correct? If you open my courses, you probably see a folder called SRAMACH2 within which you will see all of these files. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So so this is it's a little different from what I can show you versus what you see, and I get that. But the point still stands. For example, here, I actually signed up for a course start by one of my colleagues, John Bentley, in statistics. This, this course is similar to what you will see for the SAS bootcamp right now, right? And for me, this course, which says PHJPB0, is actually read only, and I can't upload any files to it. So if I want to upload any files to SAS Studio to import them, or if I want to save any of my files from the programming into a permanent library, I have to do it elsewhere. And where I would recommend you guys do it is in the My Content folder, right? You can simply, uh, if you don't want to use the My Content folder, you can use any other folder or you can even create a new folder. So, so just select the files, hit this little button, create new folder and call it new folder and save it. So if you do that, now you have a permanent folder within SAS Studio environment where you can save files that you only own that only you have access to. So once you've done something like this, go to the properties and this is the location or the path for your uh, folder within SAS Studio. So you can just select this. Selecting in SAS Studio is a little bit of a trick. Okay, I got it. And then write a new lib name statement. I'm gonna call this one my lib. And I'm calling it my lib because that really is the first um, first objective within your homework. Paste that and then write your semicolon, right? So, so uh, this is how you create your own custom permanent library within SAS Studio. If you are working on a, on a PC, uh, on SAS installed on your computer, you would just go to any folder that you 
that you want to save your files in, copy the path to that folder and then use that in the place of what I have right here, right? And even right now, when I copy this path in, the path that you guys are gonna have for that folder is going to be different, right? Because this is my username. You will all have your own individual usernames when you do this. And if you run this, it says that the library was successfully assigned. So let's do a little bit of an experiment because I wanna show you guys how this works. Um, if you want to upload something to this folder, just click on that, hit the upload button. This is the upload button within SAS Studio. Um, I'm going to upload a SAS file uh, that I have had for this class. Let me see if I can make it work. Okay, I'm, I've picked the random SAS data set and I'm going to upload it to this folder. So now you see under new folder, it shows the data set is present. And now I can upload CSV files. I can upload any file I want into that folder, right? And this is a permanent library. Now, if I write a data step, uh, let's say I want to create a new data set called temp data, right? And I want to create that temp data from this file, this file that I just uploaded into my permanent library, my lib dot psych. Then I have my run statement. Every single time I finish with semicolons. If I run this, what I'm doing is I'm creating a copy of this site data set from the permanent custom library that I just created, which is called mylib, to a data set called temp data, which doesn't have a library name in front of it. And you know that if it doesn't have a library name in front of it, it automatically gets saved to the work library. And I want to demonstrate uh, the the temporary nature of the work library right now. Let's check here. So let me go back to my libraries section. So you'll see here I have the class library, which is for this class. There is the mylib library. It has the psych data set that we just uploaded. Then there's the, and then there's the work library with the temp data, right? Now, if I were to log out of SAS Studio, which I'm going to do right now because I want to demonstrate this. So if I were to log out, and now if I log back into SAS Studio, you will see that that temp data uh, file will actually be automatically deleted. But the file that said psych in the mylib library will still be present. So let's see if that works. Um, fingers crossed, I hope it works. Programming live is always a little tricky <laughs> and you never know what you might see. Okay, so um, I'm going to come to my libraries here. So as soon as I open SAS Studio and I come to libraries, I'll see there are no custom libraries, right? These are SAS's inbuilt default libraries of which this is the temporary library work. These are the custom permanent ones. The work library is empty. There's nothing in there. If you remember, we had just created a file called temp underscore data and saved it there that automatically got deleted. You are never going to get that data set again. If you had saved the code to get that data set, you can rerun it and create that data set again. But we did not save that code. And I didn't bother saving it because it was just two lines of code. But that data set is gone. It is not coming back. But the permanent data set that I uploaded to this library that I named my lib, that should still be available. And you can go here under server files and see that that's right here. Right, so I created this new folder. Within new folder, I had uploaded this. Uh, the library that I just showed, which was called mylib, referred to that new folder, right? And that file is still here. Now the library name is gone because those library names are session specific. That library name mylib is, is eliminated. I need to redefine that library. So let me go ahead and do that again. Going to go back to properties, copy that, save. Okay. So the library name was deleted, but the file is still there. So if I redefine that library by writing this piece of code, now I can go back to libraries, open my lib, 
and there's my permanent library, permanent data set, right? So the permanent libraries will save the data set and will never delete them. It will delete SAS when you log out of the session, will delete the name of that custom library. So you have to redefine it, but the data set itself is still going to be there. And that's true for permanent libraries. In temporary libraries, the data sets that you left in temporary libraries will get deleted automatically and there is no way of retrieving those, right? Um, so I had a question. Yes, Samu. So is, does, does the same thing happen with the desktop version of SAS? Absolutely, same thing. The okay. only difference is that here I created something called a new folder for which I gave access, for which I wrote a library name. Instead, if you refer to any folder on your computer, it would do this practically the same thing. Okay, so so like if I if if we create a my uh, lib library name and then we log out of the desktop version, we go sign in again. So will the my lib uh, name go away or does that stay in the the SAS desktop? No, the library names are session specific. So if you okay. have your SAS on your desktop and you just X out of SAS, you just close hit the close button, then mm -hmm. the names of those libraries will get erased. The folder locations and the files will not get erased, but the names of the library will get erased. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. So you need to redefine that library and re remind SAS what that path to that folder was. And as mm -hmm. soon as you do, those files will come back. Okay. Thank you. So that should be basically the first thing we do every time we go in. That is absolutely right. Okay. There are two things I would strongly recommend doing. The first thing is writing the lib name for the class statement. Uh, which I should be able to pull up that lib name right here. Right. So this library, this library, I would recommend doing the first time in every single code you do for this bootcamp, because that's where all of this bootcamps files are located. Right. And then the second thing you do is create your own uh, custom permanent library. Did I say that right? Yeah. It's a custom library and it is permanent. So I would recommend doing both of these things before you do anything else for every program in this class. Is that, is that, does that help for the permanent and temporary libraries? Can I, can I add a question? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Before when I use the, like the set studio on the, that I can create like the location on C like in my, in my computer. But for now, I cannot, I don't know, I forgot that so one, I don't know how to do that. When, whenever I create the, that, it didn't work. Like all of the data you did, and then it automatically come to your computer, located in your computer. But now it's just on the, like, you know, in the visual and something on the internet, it's not really in the, located in the computer, how to do that. So are you saying, Han, that you were able to use SAS Studio to refer to files on your computer directly? Yeah, it's directly to, to put on C and then user and something like the part like that one. But for now, it's just folder and my folder and my lib and something. Well, so I'm a little surprised by that. My understanding is that SAS Studio will not interface with the files on your PC directly. If you want to read a SAS file or any other file into SAS Studio, you have to first upload it into SAS Studio's environment, which is the server files and folders structure here. So if you have a folder on here, you can yeah, read I, it into I, I SAS have, Studio. Yeah, I, I create a folder and that is a permanent, permanent folder now. But okay. actually it's just like the part, you know, the part is just like in the visual studio. It's not real in my computer. I want yeah. this in my computer. So before I did that, I did that, but I forgot, totally forgot because a few months ago. So I really don't know how to do that in my, like, this CDs, you know? I put yeah, it on actually, CD and user and something. I actually don't, did not know that you could do that. And I actually did not think you could um, oh, I did save that files here directly. I, I really don't know how to do that either. <laughs> it's on that. So I, I, I will say this. Don't don't worry too much about that. Some of the challenges that we are facing right now are because we are working in the SAS Studio environment. If you work on the desktop SAS, you won't have to worry about creating these but new folders up here it, it's a, and all that. It's a, sometimes it's a, like complicated because whenever you you did the you have to upload the file on that and then you download the file, right? You don't want yeah. to keep it on the 
on the visual one. So you have to download the file out and then upload there. It's, it's, it's not like you just click on C and then run on that folder and then take it out. It's more easy that. <laughs> no, you, you are absolutely right. It is, it is complicated, um, yeah. much more so than I think it needs to be. But really, I'm just grateful to SAS. I don't that know they... why before I, I can do that, but I, I can do that. But now I, can, I don't know how to do that. I forgot to do that. <laughs> I, I don't have an answer for you, Hang. I'm sorry. But like I was saying, I'm just grateful to SAS that they made this available in a browser. And what I will say is that just stick with this and the limited functionality in SAS Studio for the purpose of this bootcamp. Once we are all comfortable with SAS, switch over to the regular desktop version of SAS and then you can actually skip most of these problems. And I, okay. I swear, desktop version of SAS is easier to deal with than SAS Studio. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, uh, and if you are a member of the Department of Pharmacy Administration at the university, uh, we will give you SAS. So for those of you outside the department, if you want to work with us, please reach out to me separately and I, I can figure out if we can get you a copy of SAS. But uh, for those of you that are in the department, we, we can help you get SAS on your computer so you can practice there as well, right? Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah thank you, I have a quick question. Yes, Queenie. So I tried to create a temporary, li uh, temporary library on SAS, so it sh it shows that uh, file mylib.site.data does not exist. But can, I think I did. All... What does not exist? So it says that the file does not exist. So in the permanent library, I can see the site folder. And when I like, so basically, I wrote data temp, uh, temp data set mylib.site and run, but in the log, it shows that error file mylib site or data does not exist. Well, did you define your uh, library mylib? Yeah, so I created a new folder called mylib, like just like what you like explained. Uh -huh. I did the same thing, and the path uh, the path address is the same as the new uh, new folder. So I don't know what. So is wrong. that sounds unusual, Queenie. Do you want to share your screen and show us what you have going on? Uh, yeah. Uh, I do oh, think this is. Uh, I do think this is worth spending a couple of minutes over because this library with the permanent library, the class library, and the temporary library, you will have to deal with this every week for the rest of this bootcamp. So I don't mind spending a couple of minutes on this now before we jump over to the homework. So Queenie, can you share your screen and show us what you are talking about? You have disabled the participant screen. No, I, I was, I've enabled it. Um, okay. Wait, okay, let me stop sharing, then you should be able no, to see. Actually. Okay. Okay, try now. Um, okay. So here's the code. Are you able to see my, see my screen? Uh-huh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Can, can you run the lib name statement so I can see that it works, the lib name? Okay, uh, Queenie, can you go into server files and folders on the top? Yeah. I see. So here's what I would suggest. Don't create any folders within the My Courses folder. That My Courses folder is for courses that you sign up for. And okay. um, I understand you can create a folder there and you can upload files there, but can you create that new folder outside the My Courses folder? Um, so the way to do that is to just no, don't do that first. First, select the files. You see where it says files home. Yeah. Yeah. Click that. Now click on create new folder. Yeah. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want. There you go. Okay. Now write a permanent like now create a custom permanent library to new folder one. Okay. That work. Do you want to upload a old, uh, data set to that uh, new folder one so we can see if it works? Yeah, sure. I'll just. <coughs> okay. 
Oh, actually, I think I knew what your problem was. You didn't yeah. even need to go through all of that. That's fine. Go on. Okay, now go to the libraries on the left and open MyLib and make sure the file is there. MyLib. Okay, I see it. Okay, now run your code. Okay, so so Queenie, can you and anybody else on this call? I'm not putting anybody on the spot here, Queenie. I'm not trying to find errors in the work you do. Can somebody tell me why that did not work? Somebody that's not Dr. Kausal Bhattacharya, of course. Because it says uh, work dot temp and not mylib dot temp, right? On the code. Let's go back. Work dot temp. No, no, it says mylib.site. You know, it does, it does. Okay, sorry. Okay, that was a good guess though. That's the first thing I would have checked as well. So, Samal, you're on the right track. Anyone else? Why did that not work? Data files not have like temporary data. They need to the, like the folder and then go there. No, that's that's not it. It's a good guess, but but that's not it. The reason that didn't work, Winnie, is is just because you got the name of the file wrong. What? The name of the file is Psych Three, not Psych. Oh, okay. Go go back to my lab. So I have tried with Psych Three as well. Like, so why can you double click which... that data set? Sorry. Double click that data set. Open it. Okay, now see at the top, it shows the name of the file. You see mylib.psych parenthesis three. Yeah. That is how you need to name the file in your code. You think this will work? I, I hope so. It sounds space. I yeah. tried this. You, you, I think you need a space between uh, H and the parentheses. No, that didn't work either. Hmm. Go back to your code. Let me let me look at that. I actually don't think you need the space because uh, SAS dataset naming conventions do not allow for spaces. Uh, either you have a space there, or SAS is replacing that space with an underscore. Uh, can you go back to your log once? Okay, now scroll up. Okay. I see. Um, okay, go to the mylib.psych3, the, the data set that you have open on the tab on the right. Yeah. Um, Let's see, does SAS Studio give you a way to get that name out of there? Give me a second, let me try and look at that on my SAS Studio before I tell you. Uh, Queenie, can you go into uh, my lib, the library on the left? Oopsies, just a sec. I think I exist. Yeah. My go lib. To, mm -hmm. Expand my lib. Let's see that file. Now right click that psych for data set and hit properties. Let's see what the name of the file is. Okay, it still says the same thing. Um, Kaustav, any ideas as to what's going on here? This is again a problem unique to SAS Studio. I have never encountered a problem like this within SAS. Uh, Queenie, do me a favor and rename that file. Just take the three out. So right click that file, it's name a file again, hmm. hit rename and call it something else. 
anything. Call it data. Call it my data. There you go. Okay, now go back to program. Yeah. You know what to do. Yeah, I think that, sh that should fix it. Okay, let's hope this works. There you go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. SAS does not like having those parentheses and those spaces in your file names. That's what it is. And, um, and the way you were importing it, it was importing it with that file name with the space. But okay. SAS Studio refuses to read it. It will only upload it into the library. It won't actually let you work with that file. So make sure that your data set names don't have any spaces, parentheses, or weird characters in them. All right. Okay. Okay. And I that's applicable for all versions of SAS, not only SAS Studio. That's absolutely right. Thank you, Kaustu. So that's a, that was a good lesson. So Queenie, thank you for showing us this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know it's it's little things like that that sometimes take up hours of your time. So that's the stuff that I'm glad that we have these Friday meetings to go over. Um, and figure out how to do. Thank you. Okay, Queenie, can you stop sharing your screen? I want to go back to, okay. All right. Um, okay, I'm glad we figured that out. Sometimes when programming live, you, you never know what you might come across. <laughs> I'm glad that one was not, was not too much of a challenge. Um, Okay, let me go ahead and proceed with finishing the homework here. I don't think we'll be here till 11.30, but if you guys have any questions as I'm running through the homework, please interrupt me, let me know, and I will try and solve your problems. If somebody else wants to share their screen to show me the problem that they have been facing, we are happy to do that as well, but let's do that right after I complete the homework, if that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the homework. So the first, uh, uh, first bullet point in the homework completion was to create that library mylib, which I have shown you guys how to do here. So I'm gonna skip that one, move on to the next one. The next one is how to import the import underscore example CSV file into SAS. As I'm doing this, uh, how many people here actually successfully completed all of the steps in the homework? I think I know Alexia did because I saw her tweet about it. I got a hat, thumbs up for Sawmill, so I think two people must have completed everything. Eric as well. Shishir completed. All right. Okay. Um, let me show you guys how I would do the uh, import. Before my... I can I ask you a question, sir? Yeah. Uh, may I know, uh, besides syntax, what's the difference between leave name and file name? Besides, can, can you say that again, please? Besides syntax, uh, what's the difference between the function of leave name and file name? Oh, um, so lib name is trying to refer, so Shishir, lib name is trying to refer to a folder where several files are located, right? File name is trying to refer to a single specific file. So both of them are shortcuts to get to a certain place. Libname gets to a folder within which several files may be located. File name is a shortcut for a specific file. Does that, does that answer your question? That's clear, sir. So, so when you are working with SAS, I would recommend you that you just stick to libnames. You can use file names if there are some files that you're going to be calling on over and over again. But in my practice, I have almost never used file names. And I think uh, you would be just fine if you never use a file name for most of your healthcare services research needs. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I have a CSV file called import underscore example. I'm going to upload that from my computer into the new folder, which is my lib that I just created. Let's see if this will work. Hopefully you guys should be able to do the step that I just did as well. If you try to import it into my courses, you might not be able to, but if you do it into the new folder that we just created, you should be. Uh, okay, so how do you import the file from here? Because this is a CSV file, if you come to the library section, even though that CSV file was uploaded to the same place as my lib, 
you will not see it right here because the only data sets you will see within the libraries part are SAS data sets, not CSV files or other files. So I have to come back here and I can just drag this over just like that and I drop it and it should give me the import routine right there. There you go. That's the whole import routine. All I did was drag it over, right? Um, so it should not be too complicated. And um, Shashir, I see where you get the file name question because SAS, uh, SAS's import routine uses the file name command, but really I could have replaced the re ref file here, this word with this, with this entire piece of text. If I just copy paste it, I can just delete that file name command and never use it again. Right. But for now, I see that this is here. Let me go ahead and make sure uh, all of my options at the top are looking okay. Um, so I, when I was trying to drag the file uh, to import the import file uh, on our for, uh, on this thing, okay. so uh, because I am I am a I use a MacBook, I was not able to drag it, so I had to use the other way to upload it with the import data option on the top uh, left okay. or the right. Right here. Yeah, that's how that's how I had to do it. So I okay. I was just like mentioning that because I don't know if. Who, if anyone else is using a Mac or no. Yeah, that, that is very helpful. Thank you. I know Leah is using a Mac and she's on the call right now. So hopefully Leah, if you have import problems, you can try that option. All right. Um, okay. So I'm looking through my options here and it tells me that the end of the line delimiter is default, which is uh, in the case of a CSV, that's a comma. Um, I'm not going to tweak with anything there. Uh, it's going to create the new data set in the, it's called, it's going to call the new data set import and it's going to save it in the work library. I want to change that. I want to, I want to stick to the work library, but I don't want to call it import. I want to call it, um, homework one. All right. And I'm going to hit save. So it automatically changes this option here and it changes the name of the file right here as well. Um, other options generates as variable names. I think everything else is good. I'm not going to tweak it. Now I could hit run right here this little running man and to do it. But really what I asked you to do as part of the homework was to paste this code into your homework file. So instead of just doing that, I'm going to select this whole thing. And I'm not going to select that prop contents option at the bottom. I'm just going to select it until the run statement, come back to my program, hit paste. Right. Then I can close this tab out. I can say don't save. And if I run this, it should do my import routine for me without using a point and click option. So let's see if it works. I'm checking my log. Everything looks blue. Blue is a good color as far as SAS is concerned. And I jump to my output data. And those are there's, there's my two columns and 50 rows, which is exactly what the file looked like if I were to open it on my, uh, on my PC. So this is um, aim two in your homework. Now, aim three actually says, make sure that you convert this imported file into a permanent library, not just a temporary library. So if you want to do that, just look in this little piece of code that we copied and pasted from what SAS had generated for us to see where the file is generated right now. Right now, the imported file is in work.h1. So if I go to the work library, this is the file we just imported. I can open and show you guys that it is the same file. See that? Uh, now, this, the next objective in your homework says, don't save it in work.h1. I want you to save it in a permanent library. So I'm just going to replace the word work with the word my lib. Right? Uh, and I'm going to do that here as well. Uh, I see the L is not capitalized right here. That should not make a difference because uh, within variable names and SAS file names and library names, SAS is not case sensitive. You could have used all capitals or all lowercase letters and it would not have made a difference. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Check my log. Okay. Output data set looks fine. Let me make sure that this new folder is a new file is actually in the my lib permanent library and there you see it. Right. So now we've imported the CSV file called uh, import underscore example. And we've saved it into the my lib permanent folder. And if you want to confirm that it's been saved there, you can go look in this folder 
under new folder it says hw1 which is homework 1 so we converted this csv file into this sas file and saved it in a permanent library um, is everybody clear up to this point if you struggled getting to this point please do not get discouraged uh, importing is a it's a pretty finicky process in sas very often and it is particularly finicky within sas studio uh, and if you were not able to figure this out on your own that's okay we will literally never have to do an import process again for the rest of this boot camp i wanted to introduce this to you guys so that as you're working on research projects you can use the import routine if you need to but for the purpose of this boot camp we will not do any more importing and every file that you need to work on i will give it to you guys within the sas data format the sas 7 b dat format and you will never have to import anything into sas studio for the next 6 weeks okay all right uh, i'm going to move on to the next step in the homework the next step says examine the contents of the data set using prop contents uh, hopefully this part should be straightforward um, prop contents data equals my lib dot hw1 and run that's it two lines of code and sas gives me the prop contents output that's all i needed to see for this po this portion of the output file next uh, the homeworks bullet points is sort the imported data set on the variable marital underscore st which is marital status such that the sorted data set is saved in a new file in the temporary work library the way to sort a data set using is using the proc sort procedure the prop sort syntax requires you write a data command which tells you the name of the data set you're sorting. The name of my data set is mylib.hw1. <coughs> and then you list the name of the variable you want it sorted by, in which case, it, in our case, it is marital underscore st. And then you finish with a run statement. Now, this will sort your data set. But if you go back and read that bullet point in the homework again, it says sort the imported data set on the variable marital underscore st such that the sorted data set is saved in a new file in the temporary work library. So this, I don't want to resave my sorted data set within mylib.hw1. I want to save it in a separate data set. Almost every single uh, data manipulation procedure that is done through a data step in SAS will create a new data set when it does that. But proc sort is one of those things which will actually alter your data set. And it's not actually altering it, it's just resorting it. But if you don't want the resort to be overwritten, you can just write an out equals command and you can say work dot hw1 sorted. Right? And I said I explicitly said work because my homework said save it into the temporary work library. So, so there you have it, right? If I did not say this, it would have still saved it in the work library. But I want to be explicit as much as possible because the one thing you want to avoid when you are writing SAS code is you want to avoid confusion. So I'm going to run this. I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, instead of uh, using the out code over there, why can't we just uh, replace my lib with work dot homework one and just run? And it'll that, get that, that is a good. That is a good question, but I don't think that will work. The reason that will not work is that there is no hw one in the work folder, right? Right. When you are referring to the data statement, what this data option is doing is it is telling proc sort where to find the data set that it needs to sort. Mm -hmm. And if you say work.hw1, SAS is going to say, wait, there is no hw1 in the work library. I can't do this for you. Okay. Uh, in fact, if I, so now if I, if I run it with work.hw1 sample, it will work. Because if you remember when we were doing the import process, we had actually created hw1 within work. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. if I, why don't I delete this? Right. And now if I do work.hw1, let's run it. You see that it says work.hw1 does not exist. Understood. So, so in here, we want to say the name of the file it needs to sort, and in the out, fold, out space, we need to say what is the name of the output data set. Uh, let me run this one more time to be certain it is executed. Um, 
Okay, there you go. Uh, let me open it from the work for library here to be certain that it worked as I wanted it to work. Okay, so this is work.h1 sorted. And you can see it is sorted because the first 16 columns of marital status one, and after that is marital status two, and the last few call, the last few rows are marital status three. So this is what the homework needed. So that's, I checked that box. Uh, next and the last step in your homework is save your sorted data set in the permanent library you created earlier in step one using a data step. So write a data step so in order to save this file we just created into a permanent library. So the permanent library I'm using is mylib, mylib.hw1 sorted, set work.hw1 sorted. Right? That should do it. Now, I could have called this something else. I could have called this hw1 output. I, I'm creating a new file name in the my library, in the my lib library. So I can give that file any name I want, but I'm creating it based on this file. And all this is doing is it is basically copying that file. There are no changes. There is no data manipulation going on. It's just copying it into the my lib folder. Check my log, everything looks blue, that's good. Output data, the same sorted data set. And you can see that the file name is mylib.hw1 output. You can actually go into libraries here, open mylib, and you'll see that that's your hw1 output file. Right? This is, this is your homework. This is all that you needed to do. I'm going to go ahead and save this file so that you all can access it if you need to under my content. And we will do this every week uh, so that uh, anytime you miss this video, anytime you are not able to attend the homework, you will still have access to the week one homework. Now, the one thing I have not done that I'm going to actually go back and do is add comments. And and this is a this seems in this seems like it might not be very important, but as long as I keep doing it while I'm working on it, it's really quick and it's very useful later when I come back. And this is a good habit to develop early into your SAS programming experience. That's it. So I just wrote one piece of uh, comment for every single step that I'm doing in order to explain what I'm working on. Um, let me also add There you go. This is all of the information that you'll need. I recommend that as you're working on your homework, you go ahead and include these comments in there. It is, um, it should, writing these comments should come as second nature to you. So that anytime you look at a SAS file and if it doesn't have comments in front of every single step, you should say something's wrong with this file. I need to fix it before I can move on to the next step, right? And if that does not come as second nature, things can get very complicated. I am working with, uh, I work with a lot of graduate students and I've worked with many of them that have incredible programming skills and they will understand that um, as, and they, will, and they will know, and I've told them this, that even though you have incredible programming skills, sometimes if you don't write your comments in, when you have to present those results, you don't have any faith in the numbers that you're presenting. And as an academic, there is nothing more dangerous that, that gives me more nightmares than knowing that numbers I'm presenting might not be accurate, right? Uh, and coding errors are a fact of our life. But if we use these comments and if we do enough double checking, we can prevent those and we can have confidence in the numbers that we present. That concludes all the things that I wanted to discuss today. Let me make sure I didn't have anything else I wanted to talk about. Now that concludes everything I wanted to discuss today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and, and I'm going to open this up to see if we have any more discussion or comments. If not, we can end a little early. I think that's not a bad idea, uh, but I want to hear from you all first.
Anything so far? First experience with SaaS. Matthew, how was it? Do you think you can work on a project next year? I might be able to. Yeah, if Whitman can do it, you can do it, right? Yeah, if you can do it, I can do it. That's right, that's exactly right. Uh, yeah, anyone else? Keep more comfortable with everything. I'm glad you're here, Matthew. Anyone else? Okay, not hearing anything, I will say thank you all. This has been very helpful. Um, I hope the first week started out well. Uh, SAS will pick up stream a little bit and we'll go a little faster in the next coming weeks. Uh, on Monday, I will sh send you guys an email once the videos for week two have been uploaded. They're almost ready right now. I just need to make sure that your homework looks okay. So I will send you guys an email, update the files on Box and post videos onto YouTube on Monday. And I will see you all next Friday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Thanks, Sujit. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. You have a good weekend. A good weekend. Bye. Bye. Weekend. Bye. Bye. Sujit, have you got a couple minutes? Yeah. Here, let me end recording and then we can chat. Okay.